Excuse me, camera. Amen. Amen. We praise God. We give God all of the honor. Indeed, we give God all the glory for the great, marvelous, and magnificent things that he has done. Indeed, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us uh, rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day yes. that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice Amen. and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we are just so delighted, standing on our tippy toes and with a high expectation of what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will do, not only in the lives of this church, in the life of this church, but in the lives of people everywhere. So we give God all the praise and the honor. You know, we stop, we think about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the fact that he died on the cross, that you and I could have this right to eternal life, then that becomes a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. And why does it become a big deal? Because he sacrificed, he served as the perpetuation so that we could receive salvation, deliverance from the power and penalty of sin. That's a real big deal. Somebody ought to say amen, amen. hallelujah, amen. and thank you, Lord Jesus, amen. for what Lord. you have done. Yes, yes, yes. Down on the cross. Mm -hmm. So we're just happy, delighted, elated, and delighted to be here with you all today. Amen. The book of uh, Psalm uh, indeed uh, declares these words in Psalm number one. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scorn. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Amen. 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 There's something to think about. Let us indeed bow for a word of prayer. Most Holy Father, we give you thanks and praise for the great, magnificent, and marvelous things that you have done, even from the beginning of time as we know it, and even before them, at the creation of the world, you are great and you are good. And now, God, you have brought us down through all of these generations, and we can conclude several things. You are good. Yes, yes. Thank you, dear Lord, for all you have done. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your love, your mercy, your kindness. Thank you, Lord, for your humility. Thank you, Lord God, for the creation of the stars and the moon. And so even right now, as we prepare to open up this worship service to your honor and to your glory, you are good. We invite the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit to come upon us right now, all of us who are gathered together today in this pulpit. Yes, yes Lord God, we are gathered together today, not for any form or demonstration of any power, but we are gathered together to do what we are charged to do, and that is to love you, honor you, and worship you in spirit and in truth. Yes, yes. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Should we fail to do this, 
Should we fail to honor you, adore you, magnify you, lift you up, then please correct us. Because you are good. So we thank you today. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, we invite your presence right now in the midst of your witnesses to come and minister to our hearts and our minds and rule over this service today in the name of Jesus. Amen. We thank you. Amen. We say amen. Amen. My, uh, my brothers and sisters, today is our um, Community Awareness Day. And indeed, I, I want to acknowledge our, 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 our pulpit guests, uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, Patrice Mary, will be our guest speaker today. We're so excited to have her to come and talk about all of the things that she is aspiring to do for the citizens of Prince George's County and the community at large. Amen. We're just so grateful and happy to have her daughter, Paulette, visiting with us today as invited by Minister Deirdre Trash. And so we'll get to that later. Amen. Get to that later, but we just want to acknowledge her presence here in the pulpit today. That is Ms. Mrs. Patrice Mary. Don't forget that name, folks. If you ever want to see a name in lights, look forward to seeing Patrice Mary in lights. I want to thank the church for uh, signing off on um, my consecration pending uh, bishop-elect moving on full consecration on June the 25th. Amen. And I want to just invite you, whoever can come, to 501 Hampton Park Boulevard in Capitol Heights, Maryland on June the 25th at 11 o'clock uh, a.m. in the morning. Archbishop Michael C. Turner, residing prelate over the International Evangelism College of Bishop and Ministers, will serve as the organizer and implementer of this sacred service. Amen. Also, I want to thank uh, my friend in Cork, Ireland, Bishop Ola Bello and his wife, Pastor Mary Bello, for their sincere uh, reception of myself and our USA team who traveled to Cork, Ireland for 10 days, returning last, uh, last uh, uh, Thursday. Amen. So we're grateful and thankful for you, Ola Bello, my big brother, Bishop. Amen. And all the bishops that we met while we were in Cork Island from the United Kingdom, London, and other parts of the world, thank you all for your generosity and your kindness yes. and for your reception of how you treated us and fed us and took us around to visit Ireland. Very nice, interesting place of friendly people. I also want to thank today uh, Pastor Cecilia Alashagu, who has a beautiful church in Cor in uh, Traveler, Ireland, and picked me up and took me an hour and a half away from my location so that I may deliver a message of hope, peace, and prosperity and bring the fire down of the anointing and power of the Holy Spirit in Ireland. We're grateful. We're grateful for that. Yeah. And today we want to welcome all of our friends in the churches that we are working with, Service for Christ Baptist Church uh, in Liberia, Guinea, indeed, Nigeria, all of our friends in Ghana, and all across the world. We want to say, bishops, good morning to all of you who are joining in with us from around the world, we praise God and give God all the honor and the glory for the great work that you're doing. And I will see you all in October in Sierra Leone Amen. for our convention. Amen. Give God the praise and the honor for the great things that he is doing. Amen. 
My uh, brothers and sisters, I want to thank my wife, Patricia, for giving me leave and for supporting me throughout this new voyage, this new experience, and everything that, 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 that God has given us to do. Amen. I need that Bible on the pulpit. If you could pass me that Bible, I would certainly uh, uh, appreciate that down on the piano. Certainly would appreciate that. Thank you very kindly. My brothers and sisters, last week I began a message in, in uh, Travelers Island, and I didn't get a chance to finish it. I'm not going to attempt to finish it today, but I do want to emphasize several of the points that I made before our speaker comes up so that we will have uh, an ecclesiastical word from the Lord. And in that message, I, I simply uh, talked about the mission from the book of Acts chapter 26, verses 12 through 18. And I was emphasizing and highlighting the mission of the great apostle Paul. Yes. Paul is implementing in the book of Acts. The great commission is identified in Acts chapter 1, 8, and also the book of Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20 where Jesus Christ in his resurrected state is emphasizing, go ye therefore into all the world, preaching and teaching in Judea and Samaria, throughout the uttermost part of the world, and teach and preach the gospel, and baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. This is a mission that my friends and I are on right now to go forth into all the world. And I want to emphasize that during my travels to Ireland and other parts of Europe, my brothers and sisters here in America, one of the things that is coming out very clearly is that this great apostasy falling away from the church is not only occurring in the United States, but it's occurring worldwide. Christianity as we know, it is under attack. Yes, yes. Our social conditions yes. in Liberia, Nigeria, Guinea, and the United States of the people are under attack. Yes. Greater emphasis has to be placed on assisting, supporting, and helping God's people to move forward in their spirituality as they, be, as they are being oppressed by the social economic conditions of the world system, which is oppressing people. And I don't want to talk about that in too much, because we have a speaker today that's going to emphasize some of the community things that need to be done as well. In this book of Acts, chapter 26, verse 12 through 18, uh, Paul is recounting his journey uh, to, to uh, 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 and perfecting how his faith has gone. And he's talking to uh, of King Agrippa, and he's telling King Agrippa about his experience. He's telling King Agrippa one thing. How I have received his call. I declare to you in five minutes that this is going to be very enlightening, enriching, and, and rewarding for you. Indeed, he tells him in midday, O King, uh, a light from heaven uh, brighter than the sun and, and came and shined, and all of us fell to the ground, and, 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 and there was a voice that came out of that bright light in the Hebrew tongue asking, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It is hard to kick against the prick. It's hard to kick against God. Many of us must recognize that this is a reality that we are confronted with every day when we refuse to bow down to pray and to give God all the glory for the great marvelous and magnificent things that he has done. Somebody say amen. 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 Not only that, Paul was told that he was sent to open up their eyes and to remove them from uh, uh, darkness into light that they may see truth and understand that they're being moved from the power of darkness of Satan to the great light of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Think about that, my brothers and sisters. Think about darkness and you're able to see light. Well, well. Paul goes on to tell us uh, about his journey. And he talks about the difficulties and the challenges that many of us face. Amen. 
many of us face when we're going through our Christian journey and some of those challenges that he identifies and indeed uh, are found in our lives about the suffering that we must do for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Paul says uh, five times I received 40 stripes minus one and three times I was beaten with rods and one stone and three times shipwrecked. A night and a day I was in the deep in perils of waters, robbers, in perils of my countrymen, in perils of Gentiles, in perils in the city, in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, among false brethren. Many of us face these challenges today that when we stand for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we are going to have some perils in our life. My brothers and sisters, I'm not trying to take up the time because the time is well spent. If you want to hear the result and more of the conclusion of this sermon, you need to come to service for Christ Baptist Church. Amen. Located on 713. Okay, I got two pages left. All right, now. I'm not going to finish it here either. Just, just a taste of what God gave to me as I traveled over to Amsterdam and sat down and wrote that in the airport. The next day, finished it, and Jesus said, it is finished. It's not finished yet. I want to uh, thank my, my visiting speaker today for uh, giving me that time to put the Lord on not to take away from Absolutely. what you're doing. Amen. Amen. In the final analysis, what Paul is saying is uh, go in power and go do something. Mm -hmm. Don't just sit there. Mm -hmm. If you're sitting there, okay, well, then just go to the corner and sit. But our theme for this year is to activate your faith. God has an expectation that you will not kick against the prick and that you will do something. We're going to ask our uh, uh, Sunday school superintendent minister to be soon one day, hopefully God bless her, Arlene Robinson, to come and deliver us a song. We thank God for her. Amen. May Amen. God bless you. Praise God. Praise God. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. <sighs> because of who you are, I give you glory. Yes, yes, yes. Because of who you are, I give you praise because of who you are I will lift my voice and say Lord I worship you because of who you are yes, yes. yes I worship you because of who you are because of who you are lord i give you glory and because of who you are i give you all the praise yes. because of who you are I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Yes, yes. And yes, I worship you because of who you are. You're Jehovah Jireh. You're my provider, Jehovah Nisi, 
And Lord, you reign in victory. Jehovah Shalom. Lord, you're my Prince of Peace. And Lord, I worship you because of who you are. And yes, I worship you because of who you are. Cause Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I need you. Jesus, I thank you for all you are. Amen. 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 Thank you. And praise God. We, we thank God for everything that he's done. Uh, we have to move the camera back in front of the pulpit. Uh, if you don't mind, just move it over to the center. My, my brother and sister, it is indeed uh, an honor, a very distinct pleasure, excuse me. And we thank God for everything that he's doing. And we want to just now introduce uh, my beautiful wife, First Lady of Service for Christ uh, Baptist Church, none other than uh, Patricia E. Jones, who is going to uh, introduce our guest speaker uh, for today that we're so privileged to have. Without any further ado, I want to bring up our First Lady, Minister Patricia Jones. Good morning. Good morning. It's so nice to see you all this morning in the sanctuary. And for those who are watching us on social media, I have the honor to introduce to you all, or present to others, none other than Patrice Little Murray. I'm going to tell you a little bit about Patrice Murray. Patrice is the youngest of three girls born and raised in Prince George's County, Maryland. She and her husband, Philip Murray, chose to make Prince George's County their home in 1982 and have remained steadfast and active community members and leaders since that time. They are the parents of two young women, Paulette and Felicia Murray. Patrice and Philip live in Collington Station in Bowie, Maryland. Now, her education background is so impressive. Patrice Little started her education at the Beaver Heights Elementary School, attending kindergarten. She attended and graduated from Highland Park Elementary School in Landover, Maryland, and the formerly named Thomas G. Cullen Jr. High School. Mrs. Murray was the Academy of, she was the Academy of Notre Dame. Patrice received her Bachelor's of Arts in Political Science at the Morgan State University, where she was very active. Some of her involvement included serving as freshman class Senate senator, junior class secretary, and senior class president. She then attended the University of Missouri Columbia, Columbia, Columbia receiving a Master's in Public Administration. While matriculating at Muzu, that's the new name of the university, she served as the class representative and as the undergraduate advisor for Epsilon Psi Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Patrice also attended the University of Baltimore School of Law. Patrice Murray has a history of looking out for her community from serving on the Prince George's County Board of Elections, on the Tri-Area Civil Association as president of the Colleton Station HOA for 10 years, and as an officer and member of the South Boy Citizens Association. Whether serving in official capacities or simply as a concerned citizen, Patrice fought for the things that make her, our community, and better. Ms. Patrice Murray currently serves as Chief of Staff for a City Council member. Patrice was the International Contact for the National Archives and Records Administration, NARA, 
working with our archival leaders around the world. Prior to joining NARA, Patrice served as a consultant to the city manager of the city of Greenbelt, Maryland. Ms. Patrice Murray currently serves, I'm sorry, Inter okay, Ms. Murray serves as the town administrator for the town of Capitol Heights, Maryland, and as the director of the United States Senator Barbara A. Muskowski College Park office for her first two terms in office. Interesting facts about Ms. Murray, her family and her started each Christmas morning by visiting and singing to the residents of the Manor Care Largo facility for over 25 years. This is a wonderful person who has given so much to the community and done so much for Prince George's County. So after I take my seat, we will hear from no other than Miss Patrice Murray. Amen and God bless her. Thank you so much. Good Thank morning. you. Morning. Thank you for that beautiful introduction. You're welcome. And I, and I thank you so much for the opportunity. But first, give an honor to God, because it is through him that I am able to do all things. Amen. And I'm just, if you just give me a moment, I'm just going to praise his name this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Yes. Amen. Yes. I thank you. I thank you. This morning, I, I come. I come with a heavy heart. Um. I just want to take a moment to to recognize uh, my friend and fellow teammate on this journey of mine. Um, Mr. Vernon Williams passed away on Friday, the day before he and his wife were going to celebrate their anniversary. Oh, wow. They had gone away for a much needed vacation and he's gone. So I just ask you to pray for his family as well as all those who have lost loved ones during this time. It's, it's been a, a terrible time these, these last two and a half years. So if we could just take one moment just to remember and pray for, for those we've lost and their families. I was going to start this morning talking a little bit about my, my background, but well, you've heard about that. And, and I was going to mention my family, but you've heard about my family as well. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about why I am on this journey for the county council mm -hmm. this morning. First and foremost, because I'm one of you. I'm not a politician. I've worked for some, but I'm not a politician. I'm just a regular person from the community who has been working behind the scenes without seeking public office. In fact, I retired from the federal government in 2018 thought I'd come home and cross my legs for a while. <laughs> not so. God's not finished with me yet. So I have to heed his call and do the work that has to be done in the community. Politically, I, I, I've had experiences with, with United States senators and, and heads of, of state never had, I, I can't say that I've never had an interest in, in, in uh, public service because it started in junior high school when I took civics 
And I'm saddened to know they don't teach that anymore because children need to know that. And I, you know, I guess it, it, it started before that because my parents fought to keep prayer in school. Yes, yes. Unfortunately, their side didn't win, but they instilled in their children prayer because prayer changes things. Yes, it does. Amen. So I always start everything I do with a prayer thanking God for what he's done for me and praising him in advance of what I know he will do. Amen. So this journey of mine is, is not about me. This journey is about those whose lives will be touched. Yes. I come this morning to tell you about the things that I hope to see happen once I'm elected. Yes, amen. Or if I'm not elected, maybe a switch will be turned on. But I want to see things in the community to make a better quality of life. Amen. People have been telling me as I've been knocking on doors that they're concerned about crime. They're concerned about having somewhere to shop yes. locally. They're concerned about the cleanliness of our county. Yes, yes. And I want to get on that county council so that I can bring the everyday needs of our citizens to light. Amen. Somebody needs to be listening to the everyday citizens in this county. That's right. God gave me two ears, and that's what I tell folks when I go out talking. God gave me two ears to listen, one mouth. Now, I don't mind speaking up for the residents in, in District 4 and all over Prince George's County. I don't mind. Tell me your grievances. Yes, yes. Tell me your needs. Yes. But I'm going to listen because I have two ears. I'm going to listen Amen. first and foremost mm -hmm. and take it with me. Yes. I'm taking a seat for you. And we're going to make some changes. Amen. We're going to make some changes on how we develop in this county. Smarter development. I know we need development, but we need to do it smarter. Yes. Making yes. sure that our infrastructure can handle the development that, that is being placed. Yes. Development that incorporates the needs of the people who already live there. That's right. So I'm going to do something about development. Yes. And while we're on the subject of development, many people don't know Prince George's County has a climate action plan. Oh, okay. And we need to make sure, and I'm going with ideas for policy so that we can ensure that we save some of these trees in our county. Okay, yes. Studies have been done mm -hmm. that said neighborhoods without trees, they have health problems, their children have problems in school. It's, you need the canopy of trees. Yes. And you can't mow them all down and put up one or two and think that that will benefit us. We'll be long gone when those trees provide a benefit. That's right. So we need a policy in place for that. Yes. Amen. I want to see more civic engagement. The people that I've been talking to as I've been going door to door have been saying, nobody's come along here, nobody's listening to us. I'm listening. And I can't wait to serve. Another thing that I'm interested in is high performing schools. Yes. Oh, we have one over there and one over there, but I'm talking about everyone yes. because our children deserve it. Yes, they do. Let's make sure we put STEM programs in all the schools. Yes, yes. Have high expectations for all of our children. That's right. And keep the, the schools closed, open. I'm sorry. They, they, they're trying to close some schools. Mm -hmm. And we need them, especially the specialized schools. Everybody doesn't go off to college. 
somebody, I'm going to call somebody when it's time to have my refrigerator worked on or, or my heating system updated. These children learn to work with their hands yes. in places like Tall Oak School. And we need them to learn that skill. It's a skill. Yes, it is. Everybody can't do that. Yes. And everybody, everybody has different needs and wants. Right. I'm here listening. And I just want to talk for a little bit about what's in it for you, how the community will benefit. If we have community input in our government, then your needs are going to be met. Yes. Because we know what you need. Yes. You live here. You work here. We want to make sure that we have uh, incentives for small minority businesses to succeed yes. so that we have places to shop quite frankly Amen. without getting on the highway and driving you know 10 20 miles to get get a decent meal Tell us about it. Yes. we want to make sure that our infrastructure is improved mm -hmm. so that when you are riding along the roadways you can get to where you need to get. Yes. Because you see, if it's a pothole on the road, you hit it, I'm going to hit it. Because right. I'm one of you. That's right. Additionally, when we are, are developing all over the county, we need to make sure that we have a policy in place to increase our police and our firefighters so that they are not Stre you know, stretched. They're already stretched trying to take care of those of us who are here. But as you develop, develop not only a small portion of homes, make sure that you have the infrastructure set. Right. That's right. Finally, on what's in it for you, I want your trust restored in our public servants. Yes. We need some honest, God-fearing individuals to hold up their hand and take that oath. Yes, we do. Amen to that. We need to put God first sometimes. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. All the time in my life. All the time. Yes. In closing, this race that I'm running is about restoring democracy. It's about making sure that you, the people, have a choice. Yes. I, I just want to tell you why I think I'm the best candidate. Because I have experience on every level federal, state, and local. Amen. And because I'm already doing the work, yes. well, without seeking public office, all right, all right. I, I was out there doing the work. Yes. And I want you to know that I am not beholden to any group or any politicians, the only ones that I have to answer to is my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Amen. and the voters. That's, right. That's it. That's who I'm going to represent. That's right. That's right. I'm not a part of a slate. I'm not the uh, machine's choice. But I want to be your choice. I'm just ready to step up to the plate for you, to be a voice yes. for you, yes. to go out and do the things that I've already been doing, but do them on a larger scale. So I thank you this morning for the opportunity. I thank you for allowing me to stand in this holy place yes. and plead my case. 
And I ask what my husband asked as we went around knocking on doors. We ask that in all things that you pray for us yes. during this journey. I thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you. I'd like to say thank you so much, Mrs. Latrice Murray. You know, um, everyone has a choice, and this was our community service day, and we've had Ms. Murray come and speak to us about what she sees needs to be done in Prince George's County, in District 6, as well as the entire county. But she also said that you have a choice. What I like what she said is her main choice is she's gonna serve God and do what he has said for her to do. But she's working for the people so that they will know what needs to be done and she's gonna be that advocate to do those things. So I, I thank you for that. You brought up a lot of interesting points, a lot of things that are being done in our county, but a lot more that needs to be done. So, um, I thank you so much for coming and sharing your insights on what needs to be done in our county, what you're going to do, what your plan is, and at this time, um, you have um, just say thank you to the congregation for coming in to listen to Mrs. Patrice Murray, who is here for our Community Service Awareness Day, and also so that she can speak to us as well as to the community, to those who are out there watching us for everything that she wants to do. God bless you all, have a wonderful week. And at this time, I'm going to give our benediction. And I'm asking you all to have a wonderful week. We are having wonderful weather right now. We are happy for the rain, but we love when the sunshine is there. So yeah. it's gonna be in the 90s today. So you all enjoy your day. Now, unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. God bless you all.